Hello, El Nug. Hello. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> uh, very nice to see you. Um, so, um, Nesquirk. Uh, so I've got a talk for you. It's pretty demo heavy. Um, I'm going to do some live coding. You are going to be my linter. Uh, so if I make mistakes, then tell me because um, you know it doesn't work if it goes wrong. Uh, so here we go. Um, I put some emojis in. OK, great. What are you even talking about? Uh, I'm talking about today uh, your HTTP API and how it makes for sad face UI. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Meteor and what it does with PubSubs uh, and how um, I quite like the way that works and how I wish it worked in other uh, in other applications that I have. Uh, and we're going to talk about your legacy node uh, HTTP JSON API. Um, and we're going to talk about how you can turn that legacy API into a megacy API uh, <laughs> uh, without having to rewrite it all, which would be just totally rad. Um, so that's that slide. Enough slides. <laughs> Enough slides already. Let's demo. Does it demo? Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, so here we go. We're going to do um, some demoing uh, of something that I built. Um, if I can just figure out. OK, that's all running. That's great. Um, is there more? No, no. Can I see this one too, please? Yay, great. Uh, so I need a uh, that one. Yeah, cool. Uh, and here we go. So uh, I'm sorry. I have to apologize, but um, it's a to-do list. <laughs> um, it's a to-do list. We know to-do list, though. We're all good with that. Uh, and to-do list, you can check off and be like, yeah, I've done that one. Uh, you can be like, uh, add another to-do. What do I need to do? <sighs> that was boring. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything oh, interesting? What? Dance with pizza. Don't repeat yourself. No, dance with pizza. Dance with pizza. <laughs> How did no, I? Sorry. Do it's the hat. I don't know. Uh, dance with pizza. Uh, that's cool. Uh, dance with pizza. I don't know why I'm like, this might be a really long talk if we do it. Uh, so, so we got this. We got this, this app. Um, you can add to do's. You can um, uh, delete the boring ones. Uh, and you can edit things like uh, dance with lots of pizza. Um, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, to-do lists. We know to-do lists. We're good at that. Um, we, that so let me show you the code, because um, you're all kind of nodey people, um, or JavaScripty people at least. Um, yeah, this is the code. So um, it's basically a, a React E project, uh, and I don't know why I'm showing you this one first. That's not what I wanted to show you. Um, but you know, on the server, on the server, this is the node bit. <laughs> uh, it's a happy. Um, do, uh, how many of you use a happy? Do you, is it relatively well known? Okay, there's there's some. There's some about fifty percent if you round it up. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all, it's all relevant. That's good. Uh, so uh, Mongo, how many people use Mongo? All right, 100% if you round it up. Uh, and so uh, this is a, a really short file with some code in it. Um, but it's basically uh, the, the server side component of what you just saw. Um, and it's a happy server, which is um, kind of a little bit like Express, but different. And um, yeah, you do define some routes. So we've got some routes here. We've got like a, a get route for getting all of the to do to do's in our database. Um, we've got a, uh, a get root for getting a uh, single to do for when we're editing them. We want to get that. Uh, we, we've got a uh, root for like adding a new one to, uh, to the database, which is all good. This is all. Um, tell me if this, any of this is like, really complex or like, <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, but this should hopefully be fairly, um, fairly self-explanatory handlers. Uh, Request comes in. You do something with the data that comes in. You, what we're doing basically is just inserting it into the database here. Um, and so we've got other routes. Editing one is patch. Uh, and we specify the ID of the to-do that we want to edit in the URL. Um, 
and then we can remove them as well using a delete. Uh, so yeah, this is your legacy API, basically. You've got tests. This doesn't have tests, but you would have like many more um, HTTP endpoints that you, your, app, your existing app might, might be using. Uh, and it's just there. It's chugging away. It does a good job. It's, uh, it's there. Awesome. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, the UI is, uh, is your basic uh, Reacty, Reacty, Reacty thing. Um, I don't know if any of you do this, but like we've got a, so the to-do list. So this is the component. This is the home page, basically. Um, and it takes props, which are like the to-dos that we want it to render. And we've got like some functions for like when we click the, the checkbox for doing, uh, like I've done a to-do or not. Um, and so these are callbacks and uh, on remove. And we've got like a loading callback as well. So this is kind of fun. Um, and this just basically renders out the to-do list. And then, so I split out like the, um, I don't know if anyone else does this, but I split out the, uh, the kind of fetching the to-dos from the API uh, and mutating them, like as in like specifying that they're done or, uh, or, they're remo or, or I want to remove it uh, into a separate kind of wrapper component, um, which just talks to uh, this one up here. Uh, so that's kind of fun. Well, what it does is when the component mounts, it gets all of the to-dos. So when it's when the component becomes on the page, it uses the fetch API to go and call our server-side um, uh, methods and render the to-dos. Uh, so that's kind of fun. And then when we get like the on done callbacks, it also uses the fetch API to call our server-side routes for mutating the uh, the to-dos. Uh, and the same for remove, um, and and that's there's not a lot more to it, uh, so that's kind of fun. Um, so this is cool, uh, and this uh, wrong window. Uh, can we go to here we go? So we got this one. Um, I need a here we go. So ah. so this is fun until we realise that like uh, the experience that um, that we have when there's other people using this. So like, it's fun when there's only one person with a to-do list, but like, as a shared to-do list, it's not much fun. Because if I add, like, um, uh, go to the pub here, um, I see that. But the other person didn't see that, because it's not really, it's not reactive. It just, the, the problem is that when this page is rendered, that's when the data's been fetched and rendered on the screen. So if I refresh the page, then um, I can see that, but like if I then decide that I've gone to the pub, um, I can I can know that I've done that. But until this guy, the other guy, refreshes the page, um, they don't know they don't know that I've gone or that, that gone to the pub has been done. Um, so we can argue about the merits of having a shared to-do list, <laughs> uh, but uh, this is the kind of issue that you have with your UI when you have just a kind of JSON API. And you, you know, you might be like, this is fairly kind of naive approach to it. It's, uh, it's just calling a uh, like HTTP API uh, when a component mounts. You might be using something a bit more, uh, a bit more fancy to do that, like uh, Redux or RxJS or whatever. Um, but uh, you, yeah, that, that's, that's what's happening here. Um, and it's kind of annoying. Um, so, so back to the slides, because I've lost where I was. <laughs> so, what did we see? Let's review. So, we've got a happy JSON backend, um, and it stores stuff in a Mongo. Um, fun times. Uh, we've got a React front end, um, which is built in React, um, and uh, it kind of it kind of works. But it's not great when other people are using it because I don't get to see um, I don't get to see the changes. So what we actually are seeing um, uh, a lot of the time is stale data, uh, which is not great. So then um, the other thing I was going to talk about today was Meteor uh, and. What Meteor is, is a framework for uh, Node.js, and it uses MongoDB. Uh, and it 
uh, it allows you to pick your front end, so you can choose like Angular or Blaze, which is handlebars basically. Uh, uh, but they, they, you know, they, they, their main kind of focus is React, so you know, whatever. Um, and then it also uses WebSockets, which is kind of fun. It uses WebSockets to um, to do stuff like read, like whenever you want to uh, like fetch some data, you would like subscribe to a publication that had been set up on the server uh, and then you get uh, you get you get data back but you also get like changes back um, and what's kind of interesting with meteor and pubsub is that um, it's not it's not kind of I, I don't know how many different pubsubs anyone's used but like whenever I seem to see it I see it, you get kind of messages and it's up to you to decide what to do with that message uh, and, and it's like this this has been updated this thing has been updated um, and what meteor does is it kind of takes that message and it uh, it it essentially updates its local store of uh, of data so if you've subscribed to a uh, a bunch of data on the server like a uh, like a uh, you know like a query on a mongo database say i, I want all of the to dos um, then uh, what happens on, in meteor world is that there's also like a a store on your client side uh, which is updated with the to dos when you subscribe to that um, to that publication um, so so that's the kind of cool thing about it um, you'll see a bit more later, but the the idea is that the data moves from the server to the client, and then uh, and then you you just query um, Mongo on the client as if you, it was a Mongo on the server, which is kind of cool. It's called Mini Mongo, um, and it's basically a small Mongo. Cool. Uh, and then so it's got kind of remote procedure call for when you want to do stuff like mutating um, your uh, your data. Um, so you generally call uh, a method, meter calls and meter methods, um, over the WebSocket to say, I want to, uh, I want to update this thing, um, change something, or remove it, or, or whatever. Um, so these are the two uh, cool things that it has uh, that uh, makes uh, Meteor so, so rad and awesome. Um, cool. So I've been talking again for too many minutes. Uh, let's fit. So these, this is. Um, the, these are, um, this is, hey doggy, and uh, he is a dog, and if you have children, you might know that, and this is my life now, so I just, uh, you should totally uh, check out hey doggy. Um, he's very cool. Um, what am I going to do now? Right, so to now, now it's time for uh, demos again. Ah, hurry, let's build a meteor. Oh, wait, ooh, don't give it away. Uh, da, da, da. So what what I'm going to do now to show you how uh, how awesome it is, I'm going to take what we've we've got already and um, build a uh, a meteor version of it. So uh, what I will do is I will just move into uh, the directory of the meteor stuff. So I've done some of this, so it's not just me coding like the whole thing. Uh, so yeah, uh, da, 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 to do meteor. Da, da, da. So, uh, in Meteor, <laughs> we'll close that one up. So, if we were to do this in Meteor, um, just uh, to show you how it might work, uh, we would go and um, add this. Uh, so, like I said, Meteor has this uh, pub sub kind of thing, uh, and you would go in and add a publication for the to dos, um, and you would add it in this publications file. Um, and we need some things here. Uh, we need Meteor, first of all. Uh, Uh, and we need, uh, what else do we need? So we need our to-dos. Um, and so to-dos uh, are just a Meteor, uh, a Mongo collection. Uh, and it looks like this. I wouldn't worry too much about the allow stuff, but it's just a collection. We, can't, we don't access them in the same way as we, we were before, like db.todos.find. Uh, uh, it's just slightly different in Meteor. Um, uh, yes, you're right. Yeah, great. Cool. Um, uh, and then, uh, so then we can set up these publications by using uh, the meteor.publish command. And we're going to say, like, OK, uh, when I'm on the home page, I want to subscribe to all of the to dos. 
um, and I'm going to call this publication to do's, uh, and then I'm going to basically uh, get all of the to do's, to do's dot find. So this is so similar syntax to what you're, you'd expect if you're in um, in Mongoland, uh, and you find all of them. Uh, we we. We only want to get some of the fields for, for this. Uh, so like we'll get the ID field. So this is slightly different to the way you'd specify in um, in Mongo, but we just get the ID title and the created uh, at uh, and the done flag. These are some fields that they have. Uh, and then we'll sort them uh, by da -da -da -da, created that. Uh, so then if we look at what, what we were doing in the server side for, um, for getting all the to-dos um, previously in the, in the kind of happy version, it's very similar. Um, we're finding all of them, and we're getting those fields, and we're sorting them. Uh, but now we're in Meteor land. So I've created this publication in Meteor. Uh, I'm going to create another one for to, like, um, subscribing to a particular to-do. Um, and what, what are we going to do? So, to do ID, uh, uh, and then uh, then actually, you know what? We can just uh, copy this and change it because that might actually be. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> uh, to do. Okay, uh, so you have to return a cursor from a media publication. Uh, you never really return one thing. You return like and because it gets put into the, the the collection on the client side. You can find one from that collection, but um, anyway, uh, wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, and then we will. We don't need to object ID because all Meteor uh, IDs, all IDs in Meteor Mongo collections are strings, so it's okay. Uh, and and that's that. That's, that's our publication. So we can subscribe to to-dos on the home page. We can subscribe to a particular to-do on the edit page. Um, so yeah, fun times. Um, then, uh, like I said, Meteor has this concept of RPC and uh, Meteor methods, I should say, really. Um, I've set up the, 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 a couple of existing ones. Um, and again, if we look back at our, um, our happy server, uh, we've got Adding is basically this. And if we look at the methods already here, um, this is very similar. That's not helpful if I do that, is it? So um, split, right. Cool. These are very similar things. Same. They're the same things. <laughs> these, <laughs> these are very similar. Um, you get it. So there's todos.add, there's a todos.update, which is edit, um, again. Very s similar. Um, we didn't find, uh, so the interesting thing here is that in the happy version, we find one after it's been updated and return it. Um, but we don't need to do that for Meteor. And because, because we're subscribed to um, this set of to-dos, if I change one on the server, the Meteor will automatically <laughs> send the, um, the updated to-do back down to the client if, if I'm interested in it. And, um, and that's rad. Um, so I'm just going to add what we're missing here is just to do's dot to dot dot dots uh, dot remove. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, cool. Uh, and then we can remove them. Um, oh, how do we do that? Payload again. Uh, and then presumably I can just copy this again um, and change it. Uh, so it's to do's dot remove ID is dot dot. Uh, yeah, cool. Um, nice. That's it. Um, and then, so once we've got our cert, the server side set up, um, then we can look at the client side. What we can do is grab hold of our, uh, oh man. OK, so I'm going to copy. Uh, my uh, front end, my home page. I've already copied over these, um, these, the other pages. So the, uh, so that in here, whoosh, 
really big. Uh, they're in here, and I've already copied them over and altered them already. I'm just going to do the home page quickly to show you how that might work. Uh, <coughs> solution. Uh, fetch. Uh, and uh, what is the, the URL? So UI says to do list. Um, to uh, UI. Cool. Uh, so I have just copied that over. That's fun. Um, so we've got that here. Um, and we need a couple of things now. Um, we, need, we need Meteor again. Import Meteor. Uh, we need Meteor because we're going to be calling those methods and the way you do it is uh, the methods that we just defined on the server. And the way you do it is through the global Meteor, global, but the Meteor object. Uh, what else do we need? So we want import uh, create container. Uh, where are we? From uh, slash. Uh, from React Meteor data. Um, and so, yeah, with the container, like instead of like publishing to do's from our REST endpoint, we are going to subscribe to our um, to do's publication and create container is going to allow us to do that. Uh, but you'll see that in just a second. Uh, so, we also want the to do's. Uh, so, we're in the client side now, but we're importing the uh, Meteor's Mongo collection uh, in our client side code, which is kind of fun. Um, and we are that's not right. That's kind of fun. Uh, so once we've got those things, uh, we can uh, we can do some some interesting stuff. So um, we're going to use create container. Da, da, da. Uh, so create container takes a function um, that uh, we 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 use to return the data for our to do list container. So rather than uh, to do this container fetching its own to do's uh, and specifying where or holding state of when it's loading or not, um, that's going to be the job of the container here and this function here. Um, we, this function gets passed the props that were, um, that were passed to it. Uh, and, um, and in there, we can subscribe to Do -do. We can subscribe to our to-do list, da, da, da. and the idea is we return uh, we re return the to-dos from our Mongo collection from our to-do collection. So we just do to-dos dot find, uh, uh -huh. uh, and then we're going to sort them. by created at. Uh, so we're using the same uh, query that we used on the server. Which is kind of cool, um, and then oh, we need to we need to fetch these. So ah, so to do sort of find in Meteor Land will return us like a cursor, and fetch will uh, get all of the documents in that cursor and uh, give us back an array. So um, that's just a quirk of Meteor. Uh, and we can con maintain this kind of loading state because uh, our subscriptions, the handle that I just um, I just uh, I just got got here uh, has a property called uh, ready, um, which I can query to see if the subscription has finished its initial load of the data that I've asked for. Um, and that's going to not give me the right thing unless I put negate it. Um, so yeah, so this is fun. But yeah, so what happens is this container is uh, it will render this to-do list. The, well, our, our container will render a container which renders the to-do list. But um, 
what happens is when this, when this container that we've created using create container mounts, it will call our get data function. Uh, and our get data function is like, I want to subscribe to these to do's. Uh, at some point, the to do's will come down from the server uh, and get put in the to do's collection for us. And, uh, and initially, this will just be, uh, sorry, this will just be like an empty array. But when they do finally come down, uh, this function will be called again. Uh, when the collection is ready, when you know data changes in the collections, uh, and so uh, and and these the properties of this object that I return here are passed as props to the to-do list container. It means that we don't no longer need uh, our state here because uh, we are not managing that. This container is not managing that at all. Uh, so I can just get that from props now, uh, which is cool. Um, and then um, I can change page. Um, <laughs> and then, then I don't need this whole chunk here, which is like fetching the to-dos in the first place, because that's all being handled by the subscription. Uh, we like are on done. OK, so this is the interesting bit. So now uh, we, 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 these two things are not, we're not using this because we're in Meteor. Um, so to call our Meteor function, our Meteor method for um, toggling the done state, we can just do meteor.call. Um, and we called it, let's have a look, what did we call it? So it's uh, to do's.update. Um, so we can just call this method. Uh, let me just double check. Choose the update. Yeah, and uh, we give it the to do that we want to update and the uh, the state the the done flag uh, for for what it's done and then that my error but we don't care about that really. Uh, oh, oh. I can't not do this. <laughs> uh, uh, so there we go. Let's take it out of the way. Uh, to do is remove. Uh, and the same same thing goes here. This is how we call Meteor methods, um, just Meteor.call. Um, so it's kind of fun. Um, and then and then so uh, wah, something that I missed out is that if you look at this uh, this to do list after we removed or after we changed something, um, we we called this fetch to dos function, um, which would go and fetch them all because we we've. Um, We've changed something, so I need to get a new, a fresh, kind of updated version of it. Um, and uh, yeah, so we do that there, but we also do it on remove. And we can also, uh, we could also like update our local kind of view of the world, and, and if we wanted, um, or go and fetch a new set of everything. Um, but you don't have to do that here because we are calling Meteor. We're, we're updating uh, the 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 set one of the documents in the set of documents that we're interested in. So Meteor will then um, automatically propagate that change back down to us. And then, uh, and then the, the data get data function will be called. And then new props will be sent back down. So we, you know, there's less coding to do. And things happen a bit more automatically, which is, which is good fun. Um, duh, wow, OK, cool. I think I've done all of this now. It's great. Um, so I did a lot of coding. That took much longer than I thought it would. Um, but now uh, I can hopefully meety, meteor this. And um, if I'm really lucky, it might work. But you all saw no errors, right? So. <laughs> Okay, right, okay, it's apparently running. Okay, yeah, hooray! Oh my god, it works. Um, so now we've got these two things, and now hopefully I should just be able to pow, 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 pow! Uh, hey. This is great. <laughs> Edit these, that changes, add one, la la, la la la, delete it over here, okay, goodbye, it's gone, okay, goodbye. Right, yeah, cool, ha, wee! Uh, so that's that. Hey. Hey. Awesome, right? Well, you're wrong. It's not awesome. 
Nobody, who gets to, who, <laughs> okay, how many of you work on greenfield projects all day, every day? <laughs> Not many. Uh, okay, not everyone works on Greenfield projects, so they can't just choose Meteor and just create a new application and start from the scratch. Um, they also don't have the privilege to, if they've got a big REST API that is already there, they don't necessarily have the time or budget or whatever to go and just rewrite it. Um, and, that, and, and that is kind of the issue and kind of what I want to address. Um, I've got this problem in that I've got a big JSON API that is, you know, it works, it works well, it's nice, it's happy, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. But the front end is just a bit uh, not very nice. So um, what I would quite like to do is have the magic of what just happened there happen uh, uh, for, for me in my old app, not having to rewrite it. So, uh, so there we go, Nesquik. Ness, Nesquik is Ness, uh, and Ness is WebSockets for Happy, um, which is which is just rad. Um, it has built in, it has some PubSub stuff, um, which is really cool, uh, and it's slightly different to Meteor. So the the like I said, the PubSub in Ness is basically uh, it will it works on the server, and then you you basically rather than um, Ness. Uh, remembering what document set you are uh, currently subscribed to. It gets you to manage what, um, what has changed in that particular set potentially. So um, for instance, if you were to like update a document, you then all, all you need to do is just tell all connected clients that are subscribed to that, for, uh, to that particular doc document, that endpoint, um, that that document has been updated. So it's not, it's not quite so automatic. But it's good enough. Um, it's good enough for me because uh, I, I don't have to re-implement it. It just it just works. Um, and what's really awesome is that over your WebSockets is you can call your existing endpoints. So all of your endpoints that are being used by your legacy app that have tests and are working great um, can still work. But they're just called over WebSockets, and you can also fall back to just HTTP if your uh, if your you know if your app it works in yeah, in in like some legacy environment uh, uh, for some of your clients, but others they can. So, um, so that's kind of cool. Um, Ness, yes. So Ness and Quirk and I don't know Quirk. Um, so Mingo is the uh, mini Mongo. So I talked about mini Mongo and I looked at the Meteor mini Mongo and it's really difficult to kind of extract it from the Meteor project. And I also looked at mini Mongo library on NPM and it was just not great. Uh, it had a lot of stuff that I didn't want in it. But then I found this awesome one. If you like um, Flash Gordon, you will like this. Uh, the Mingo. It's called Mingo. Uh, and it is, it's basically uh, Mongo or the Mongo query, uh, but implemented in JavaScript. So uh, the, the way in which we queried uh, the database for stuff in, um, in, in Meteor on the client, uh, we can do something similar in Nesquik, which is awesome. Does it demo? Okay. Um, so, okay. Yes, it does. Um, what, what I'm going to do now is going to take our old, um, our old app uh, and we're going to uh, convert it into a new, uh, a new Nesquik app uh, without having to rewrite the back end, only minor, minor changes um, and and hopefully that will be awesome and it will work in a very similar way. Um, so blah, blah, blah. what do we need to do? Let's go do some more coding. Cool. Let's quit that. Uh, we to do this quick. Uh, and so we can just forget about all of this. Um, da, da, da. And we're now in here. Wow, which is basically uh, what was in this solutions wow, uh, to do fetch. Uh, and but in uh, some instances, I've already done already, and we're just going to do what we did before and um, and uh, Nesquirk up the home page. Um, so da -da -da, let's do it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new so. Uh, To do list. Uh, I'm going to grab the contents of the existing one. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to create a new server.js file uh, and I'm going to grab the contents of the existing one. I'm going to put it in there um, and then 
let's move that out of the way. Um, what do I need to do here? Uh, so we just need to require nest quirk. Quirk, quirk. <laughs> Uh, and then from there, we just need to, uh, in, in Happy, we just need to register the plugin. Um, and then uh, what we're going to do is a similar thing to the thing we did in Meteor. We're going to set up our, um, our publications, our subscriptions that people can subscribe to. Um, and you do that via server.nq. Uh, NQ is shorter to type than Nesquark. Uh, dot subscription, um, and so we're going to do something similar that we did before. Uh, we need a few arguments in here, um, and this is we're going to call we're going to call this. So what you have to do with Ness is you have to specify a path as if it were like a path uh, in your REST API, like a, a URL path, rather than just having words that you can subscribe to. Um, so to dos, um, and what do we get? We get this is slightly different, but we we can use it in a very similar way. What happens here is like just like with uh, with Meteor when we had our uh, our server publication here. Um, so this function is called when people subscribe to to this. Uh, not that sorry. Uh, so this function is called when people subscribe to the to dos. Um, we're going to do basically the same thing. Um, but in asynchronous uh, the JavaScript world, um, to dos we have to dos uh, reply. That's great. Uh, so we've got one subscription, and we can do um, to do that, uh, and then so for subscribing to a single um, to do. Do, 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 do. Great. Um, and then, so like I said, with uh, the difference between Meteor and um, Ness is that you manage your subscriptions manually. So um, once you've once you've subscribed to something, um, your code has to then inform all of the connected WebSockets when things change. So, uh, for instance, uh, like if I've added a new um, a new um, a new to do to the collection, uh, I just need to do server.nq.add. Um, and that will, we need to tell it what, what subscription we're talking about and the, the, the thing that has been updated. Same thing for editing. Uh, so we call update. Uh, da, 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 da. So we need to, yeah. So we've got two uh, subscriptions that we need to inform about this. We need to inform the all the to-do subscription, but we also need to inform the um, the the, uh, the to-do for the the single to-do subscription as well. Um, so we do that by by doing something like this, uh, and then the similar thing for removing. Uh, remove. So we say. All to dos, this to do has been removed. Uh, all for this particular to do. Uh, oh, wait a minute. What? What's going on here? For remove, you only have to specify the uh, the ID of the to do that was that was actually removed. So uh, that's that's it for the server side. So we haven't we haven't really changed the existing endpoints. We've just added um, a couple of chunks of code to manage our subscriptions. Um, so that's kind of fun. Da, da, da. And then, so to-do list, again, same sort of, same sort of thing. Uh, right, so we're back on the client. We're back on the home page. Um, we're going to, we get a similar create container. Uh, <laughs> 
create container and we get a uh, with with uh, with client. So with client allows us to access um, the um, function, uh, the 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 client, the instance of. So like when we were calling um, the Meteor methods, we we're using Meteor.call. In this in Nesquik world, we're going to just use the client, which is the WebSocket client, to um, call our existing endpoints. Um, and with client, it's just a helper that allows us to access the client that is currently connected that is in the world. Network. Uh, so that's that. Well, well, well. So then we go all the way down to um, to the end again, and we do something very similar. Create container. Pow. Um, we've got a similar function that we use. Function, and then we that gets given our props. Uh, we can you we get a handle as well. Uh, and instead of using Meteor, we use this, um, this sort of subscribe. Uh, but the other thing we need now is we're going to subscribe to the to do subscription, but we're also going to pass it our to do's collection. Uh, so this is different to, to what Meteor does, but um, uh, where is it? So that is in. Domain forward slash to do's. I think I put it there. To do's with a capital. Rad. Thank you. Uh, and then again, we do, we return our to do's. Uh, find. Uh, okay, and so this is slightly the same uh, sort as you would do it in regular uh, Mongo land created at. Uh, uh, and then, okay, so Meteor had fetch, uh, Mingo has all. Um, that's kind of fun. Um, and again, so we can do loading uh, not handled already, uh, which is kind of cool. There we go. Um, and then, and then, then basically the same thing again. We don't need a state because uh, that's being given to us through the props. Uh, I will also change this. Um, uh, and then again, we don't need the fetch to do this. Um, and when we're done, we are not going to do this, uh, and we're not going to do this either. Uh, but now we can we can call this dot client. Um, what do we call? What do we call? Do, do, do. Okay, uh, client dot request. Uh, and we will request to do slash, uh, and then woo, the to do ID. Uh, and then we need to say, well, uh, da, 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 da. we need to say these things. So here, we, our client is calling our existing endpoints. Um, which is cool. Headers, got some headers. Should have checked that this works without these because this takes ages to type. Uh, cool. Uh, 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 Application is great, great, great. Great, so that's that, that's that. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Sorry, delete. This is patch. This is patch. Uh, and then we've got a payload. The errors are getting more frequent. Sorry. Uh, done. Done. Payload's done. That's great. Um, and then we just have a um, maybe it didn't work problem. Okay, cool. 
So then this is similar for remove. No, not there, there. Uh, to do slash to do ID and we method delete. Uh, and we don't have a payload because there's nothing to pay. Uh, and nice. So that's cool uh, that we are we're calling existing endpoints fun times. Um, and that's it, I think, I hope. <laughs> uh, and npm run watch. Let's start it up. Oh no. So that this, this code is the exact code that I just wrote, pretend. Um, uh, but then we should just be able to refresh this guy. Uh, we've got back our, because we are using our Mongo from before, we've got back the old to-do list. Um, but hopefully, if we have any luck, this will work in exactly the same way uh, as it did before. Um, uh, and, that's, and that's that. How awesome. Um, so that's cool. How does it work? Uh, the server is really fit and wrap it over NES. Uh, the, when, we do, when we did the subscription, um, all it does, if you've ever used NES before, uh, is just call NES's subscription function uh, with an unsubscribe uh, option, uh, which is kind of rad. Um, the, uh, so when we're managing our publication, when we call add, update, or remove, uh, we're just calling uh, server.publish with path, and, and we're uh, ex like expanding our uh, our call to this this function with a message with uh, which has a, a, a kind of uh, hang on <laughs> an added a ready added updated or remove property and uh, some data so the things that had actually changed um, on the client the difference that you saw when we subscribing was that we um, we when we subscribed we um, uh, we we actually gave it the collection that we were um, that we wanted to uh, it to put the things from this subscription in. So, um, so that's cool. Um, so when we subscribe, we set up a kind of mapping between uh, the path or the subscription name and the collection where we want the things to go. So when we get messages for that particular subscription, we know that we need for this collection we need to either add, remove, or update it. And then collections are just event emitters. Specifically, they have a change event, which is just emitted whenever things change. Um, and they're basically just a proxy to Mingo, uh, which is kind of rad. Um, and then, so create container, as you saw, um, like with Meteor, it calls get data on mount. Um, it sets state for whatever get data returns. Um, and then when, um, when the state changes, the component that it's wrapping uh, gets, uh, gets updated with the state. Um, and so what's interesting, so the, the kind of, yeah, the, the kind of key part about this is when we call get data, it listens to the collections that we use. So when, when get data is called, we do some subscribing. We use this dot to subscribe to subscribe. Uh, and when, uh, when we did so, we gave it the collection. So we know which collections are being used by our component um, and we can subscribe to uh, the changes. Um, and then so when, when changes happen, we can uh, call get data, get data again, um, and then we can re-render. And that's it, yeah. Significantly longer than I'd hoped for. But yes, that's it. Thanks. Uh, you've been great. Thank you.